Markets cheer Alcoa as it kicks off a fourth quarter earnings season, beating on revenue. China's exports and imports slow to a two-year low, raising speculation of more monetary easing. And Fitch says it will not lower France's AAA credit rating in 2012. And the tech event of the year, the Consumer Electronics Show, kicks off today in Vegas. I'm Alex Steele, and the morning call starts right now. Good morning, I'm Scott Redd, the Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. And I'm Alex Dew with The Street, and together we bring you Morning Call. Scott, we have the S&P here. Can it actually break and hold October highs? It's knocking on the door. So the question is, can it come in? A lot of traders have been trying to position along ever since that December 20th gap and go, this has been the target. Can we get back to that October 27th high of 1292, get above it, and reach that 1420, no, not, not 1420, that's the year. <laughs> that would be really that's high. The, yeah, <laughs> that's what Dougie Cass said for the year. But 1320, 1340, which is really somewhat realistic this quarter if everything keeps coming out the way it's been coming out as far as some better U.S. data. Now Fitch just came out and said they're not going to touch France's AAA rating for 2012. You know, so that was a plus. So it's starting to get some unknowns out of the way. You have the breadth is, is great as far as different sectors participating different type of patterns going up. So you have the participation there. Just traders need to stay the course and just don't trade above your means. And not to mention, as we go into earnings season, as we saw with Alcoa, it wasn't a complete disaster. It didn't right. really disappoint. I mean, revenues were better than expected. It also guided global forecasts for aluminum demand of 7%. These were all better than expected, right? So perhaps sentiment might be a bit too negative headed yes. into earnings season, which could also provide a nice catalyst. Well, that's exactly so. And if you look at Alcoa, case in point, it was trading at the bottom end of the range. So if you look on the chart of Alcoa, you'll see it was all the way down here. So they weren't expecting anything. So if they're not expecting anything, it's not like when the earnings came out, it was at like a 13 or even above 11. You're talking down here. So it has room to go to 10, maybe 11 bucks. And at some point this year, back to 12, which is a nice move for Alcoa. And if you also take a look at the S&P, which we just talked about, check out this chart. Okay, look at the low that was put in October. Remember we said there's a 75% chance that this was the low of the year? Well, since then you've had a nice series of higher lows. Your low in, in October, November was higher, December was higher, then early this year we broke above the downtrend. And I know traders have been saying that there's been light volume, it's been very lethargic right around here, but you know what? It's giving you time to position in the stocks that you want. We're now opening above this high. Next high here is 12.92. We close above there and you're talking 1320, 1340 in this quarter. So then what's your strategy here when we see the futures opening up today? Would you be selling certain stocks on this rally or perhaps even yesterday? Or would you sort of be looking to add to those longs? It's almost a case-by-case a, a -case basis. For the past two, three weeks, I've been trying to be long the spiders and hold them, trade around the size, long the OAHs ever since that inverse head and shoulders pattern, and then being very different str strategic positioning in different stocks and different sectors because as you came into the new year you saw some some rotation you saw MasterCard mm -hmm. get beat up you saw Visa get beat up McDonald's got beat up IBM wasn't acting the same then you also had a great move in Google you know in the first end of the year 35 points and now it's been beaten up so it's been a very specific type of trade I've been trying to hold like seven eight nine positions trade around them go after some of the January effect bank stocks some of those heavily shorted stocks so there's been a lot of good trades but it's been very sector, stock, and chart pattern specific, so you have to know how to read the charts and trade within your means. And we are going to get to all those things. <laughs> we're going to kick it off with the semis. The reason why I wanted to highlight the semiconductors, Scott, is because we're, you know, CES, Consumer Electronics Show, huge tech show opening in Vegas today. We actually have people there from the street, shameless plug. <laughs> um, and I wanted to look at the semis because I read a note from FBR Capital Markets that said that Q4 earnings season for this group could be disappointing, that shipments have actually fallen since the third quarter earnings results, and many companies Companies could actually wind up reporting lower revenues. So as a whole, is the sector showing this sort of decline or showing this fatigue? I don't think it's showing the fatigue because the socks and the semis are ready to break out. And okay. if they can come out with earnings like they said, and if that is the trough, then all of a sudden, if it's priced in, the shorts get squeezed and we continue. Well, because the other, the other side of the note is oh. that FBR said that you're getting ahead of me here, Scott. <laughs> it, is that the first off, the earnings for fourth quarter could be really rough. Right. But then management in the, for the first quarter will say, but this could be the trough that this could be the change, that come the end of the year, shipments will pick up, and this could be sort of the bottom for the semis, in a way. Well, the two complicated things are if, if that's the way it comes mm -hmm. in, it's not priced that way. If you look here at the SMHs, you will see that there's excitement here. We're not talking, we're not near the October lows. We've been moving up with the market. So if, they, if it can keep doing that with that type of 
earnings expectations, we're in really good shape here with the semis. If you look, we're about to break above this uh, recent downtrend, which we actually did yesterday, and now you don't see another you know, battle of resistance up until about 3250. So if the semis, which are the nuts and bolts of tech, keep continuing higher with your low, higher, low, higher, low, you're going to see technology perform, and, and, and that's with like bad earnings. Imagine when it starts to accelerate, then it's going to get exciting. But if we wind up selling off on, say, rough earnings for the fourth quarter, where's a good support that you can look at for the SMH that might be that good buying level to take advantage of better data down the road? So if it's not priced mm -hmm. in, and if you look back at the SMHs, you will see that there are moving averages underneath that should be able to hold. Like we broke above the downtrend. It'd be great to see if we could hold above this, but it's right there. So really, I would say right around this area, right around the 30 area, which is a little bit below these moving averages, I'd like to see this hold. But if this were the case, you would see some pressure on the overall market. All right, let's go to the individual names then. Let's start with Intel. It's the biggest blue chip there. Uh, well, how does the chart look? Intel last year started to finally get some respect after doing multiple quarters of, of record revenue, record net income. You know, look at the chart here. They even came out last quarter a little bit disappointing and it was absorbed. So this stock looks good. It's getting institutional interest. Investors have been rewarded. So take a look at the level that where it could break above. Go to the chart once again. Here you are. We're right back at the highs. We're right back at this like 25, 50 area. I know it's been slowly and methodically coming back up. But overall, the trend has been up. The trend has been up in Intel. People have been buying the dip there. Now, the question is, if this market get, wants to get frisky, it could get above this 25.50 and continue. I think at some point, Intel can be 31 this year. And then I wanted to go to Broadcom. It has a lot of exposure to Apple, but also to Nokia. And this FBR note noted that the uh, 2G products might be really suffering, which would definitely be a hit to Nokia, which could hurt, hurt Broadcom. It's not near its 52-week highs. Wanted to see how the chart was holding up. This has been a bottom feeder type trade, but a lot of bottom feeder trades have been working this year. It's almost one man's trash is another treasure. If you look here at the chart of Broadcom, it was upgraded yesterday. So mm -hmm. if you weren't involved, this is what I would say. Let it trade for a while above this gap. As long as it holds above this area here, this 3061 and goes sideways, there will be a trade above that high. And I do think that it could methodically go back to at least 33 and then perhaps even 35. So if you didn't stay involved with this pain and you want to get involved right around here, I would say put your stop in uh, around 30, buy it here, and you could see a nice methodical move if that upgrade is correct. What about Qualcomm? Qualcomm mm -hmm. is totally different. Qualcomm's been acting well. It's uh, technically in, in a great shape. It looks like it actually could break out. Institutions love this. Investors have been rewarded with it. If you look here at Qualcomm, you will see you know, it's well above. Like Broadcom is down here. Look where this is. It's above the moving averages. If it could finally start getting above 57, you could see a move up to the 5960 area. This one, I would say, is much more investment quality than a Broadcom. All right, so we have Qualcomm, Intel doing really well. We have Broadcom, perhaps a catch up there. What about Novellus and, say, a KLAC? They're both near those 52 week highs. What do you do with them? Because you have to wonder if there's some downside risk if the fourth quarter earnings actually do disappoint. Right, they're, they're pricing in really good quarters. Right. And we've spoken about Novellus many times. And Novellus just made new highs. You look at this chart, you know, we talk about the 90s. Well, this stock's from the 90s and it's also back in shape. If you look here, you know, look at that breakout yesterday. This is a, a, this is a chart pattern's dream where you have a, a gap up, you never fill the gap right here, you go sideways and then you break higher. This is a new highs. This looks good. Clack hasn't done that yet, so put it on the radar. Clack, you know, has been just hovering here hovering near those highs, so perhaps like it follows in the away, footsteps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it starts getting above this 49. Clack could also get a bit frisky. So at this particular point, keep it on the radar for that same type of novellus trade. All right, talking about frisky stocks, we have a lot more of them for you, so stay with us. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back. We're going to get into stocks that have high short floats that could pop as the markets hold up. So if you look at the uh, variety, of, say, the Netflix, the Green Mountain Coffees, the First Solars of the world, how do you know where the best opportunity there is, the best short squeeze opportunity? You have to look for volume. What you have to do is you have to have a plan of about four or five of them, and you have to know the levels that shorts would be a little anxious and worried about that they would have to cover. So what you want to do is you want to have a plan with four or five of them. We just traded Netflix. Mm -hmm. Netflix has been the story all over the media. If you look at the chart of Netflix, we focused on this last week and it became one of the best vehicles so far this year. So you look at the chart here. Look what happened here. You know, obviously it's been crushed. 
So with the proper stop loss, you're not in this pain, you're out of the way. Then you have this nice lower level here with a very big short interest, like an 18% short interest. This was the day we got involved. This was the day it broke out. If you go here, I'll show you the volume. Let's put the volume basic study. Go right here, ba ba ba. Okay, one more second, volume. volume. And... Okay, there we go. <laughs> Look at the volume that came in for the first time on this day. So light, light volume, volume came in, and that was the day it woke up. Then it went sideways and continued. Now it just filled this gap. So for me, I was in it for a few days. I sold it yesterday because I said, you know what, this is a nice, what, 15, 20% move. It's about to fill the gap. So at this particular point, I think the real meat and potatoes move is out of the way, but we do have some setups with some others that fit the very same like similar what? setup. Is it a Green Mountain Coffee? Is that the one you go to next? I and mean, that got really hammered. Well, Green Mountain Coffee actually looked horrendous yesterday, but it has the exact same setup, like Alex said, but then it reversed. So it is on my radar. If you look at the chart of Green Mountain Coffee, you will see stock has been battered and bruised from 120 all the way down. They tried to break it lower, but look, they couldn't. And look at the volume that came in. So for me, I'm going to watch Green Mountain Coffee. If it could start to get above 47, you could see some continuation to this move, but make sure that volume builds here. This is something that's on my radar. Then you look at a first solar that has a 35% short float, but for good reason, right? I mean, we're seeing a lot, a lot of countries, especially Germany, cut subsidies for, uh, for solar kind of energy, for solar energy. So why even bother? I mean, could, could it even go lower, even more short pressure? It could, but there could be a good trade there. You know what? That that's, could have been the reason why I went from 140 down <laughs> to the low 30s. And at this point, there's talk that it could be a takeover target. So why would you want to be short something gets taken over? So that's when you have that push-pull relationship. Right. So if you look at the chart of FSLR, I think it looks very interesting. You have this last gap down. You know, after a move from 140 last year, you know, it perked up yesterday on some volume. I do think I'm long this actually right now. And if it can start getting above 3740, I think it attempts to fill the gap. It might not be as explosive as Netflix, but I do think there's going to be a nice trade here to fill this gap. I'm not saying it's going to get back to 50 or 60 or 80, but you know what? From 37 to 40 or 40, you know, two or so, that's a great trade. What about Diamond Foods? There were rumors in late December that David Einhorn actually bought uh, a stake in, the, in this company. So that could be adding to the pressure, right? Um, this one is also bad in a bruise. I think, let me check out the short interest. 49%. Yeah. That's a lot of little shorties in there, and the stock has been crushed. Unless it's going out of business, they better have some kind of out plan. So look at the chart of this Diamond Foods. It was as high as 100, okay, way back when, not even a year ago. Okay, down here, big type of volume. Someone got excited or scared about something, and it didn't hold up. But now it's going sideways. Volume is dying. So at this particular point, if volume can come back, and this could start trading above, what's that level there? About 3430 with some big volume. I do think that it could head back to this area where people covered the last time up to 40. So not an investment, but something to watch for a trade. And last stock I want to hit on is Molly Corp, near 52-week lows here. But what impetus would there be for this uh, company for traders to actually cover their shorts? Well, that, this whole group, if you remember, like two years ago was the hottest group out there, yeah. the rare earth metals. And ever since, they've been cracked. So they're heavily shorted. Look at the, the move on Re yesterday. Re was like supposed to be one of the, the little guys that wound up going nuts. Something that went up, happened here, right? From three to almost 670. That is a short squeeze. Maybe they're getting taken over. Who knows? Molly Corp was the one that was the strongest one back in the day. You go to the monthly chart. Look where this came from. Almost 80 all the way down to here. So you go back to the daily chart and you see this nice little downtrend here. If someone starts getting excited about Molly Corp like they did like Re, you could see a big move. So this area comes in around 2740. So I would watch this for the area that if some excitement comes in, it can get going just like one of its uh, little baby brothers. All right, now we're going to go to some other quick ways to make some cash. We're going to hit on Apple made fit new 52 week highs yesterday, but couldn't hold. What does that mean? Um, two things. First, you know, we've been talking about Apple for about two weeks and I've been trying to hold it for two weeks and Apple had a big move into the 52 week highs. Typically, Apple likes to run to 52 week highs you know, a week or two before earnings and then take a break. So yesterday I sold my Apple and some people actually made money short. So if you look here on the chart, you will see this is when I got excited about Apple. This was that gap and go. This was when I tried to add to it. And then this also was a nice trade when it went above 410 and filled this gap. So right back at these highs, it's going to bring out some sellers. So it tried to break through above this 426.70, couldn't hold. Some shorts got into it late in the day. Today we're opening up with the futures. I'm sure some Shorts might actually come in and, and fade the opening strength and use yesterday's high of what is this, um, 427.75 as a stop. But overall, you know, very strong, just a bit extended. It could use a little bit of a rest in this area before the earnings come out. And I believe those are 
at some point the 18th and 19th. All right, very quickly, four more stocks to go. Google didn't rally with Apple, been really beating up the last couple of days. I know what's one of your favorite stocks for 2012. What you doing? This just shows you how you have to be a market timer. Google, the pivot price was 6.35. It went $30 from there. And just because I'm risk averse, I did sell some, and I said that on my chat room, and, and I was like, $30 is great. Let me see what type of pull-in we have. Never knew that it would be so harsh. So if you look here at the pull-in of Google, you will see it happened. You know, a lot. I'd say, I'd say it's a lot harsher than people would want, but it's into support here. So yesterday, what I did, just because I'm not sure what's going on here, I bought on the close some of the January. 650 calls just in case earnings are going to be good so this way I have my risk defined and I'm back involved because I did sell up here after this nice breakout move from this 635 zone. I want to hit on Caterpillar up about one and a half percent on Monday. Wonder also if it's going to be highlighted today because of China's import and export data. They were on two year lows but still you did see copper imports were really great for December. Oil imports are really good for December so I wonder if it's going to give a nice boost to Caterpillar or if it'll sell off on the news. Well, right now it's trying to come out of that box formation above 98.99 with volume on this news. I think you get additional gains to what has already been mm -hmm. a nice run here in Caterpillar off those lows. And Goldman Sachs, you said that you were trading it for a bounce. What are you looking at? I'm long overnight, and I'm going to show you a quick chart. If it could finally break above 96.50, you see a nice little bull flag here. I do think that it can get going again. The banks have been strong. This has been downgraded twice. Perhaps it absorbed it above 96.5. You could see it move to at least, you know, 100 or two or so, but it needs to have volume as well. And Lululemon actually guiding higher this morning, expecting to earn about 70, sorry, 47 to 49 percent for the f cents for the fourth quarter. Couldn't get that out. That is seven cents higher. Are you playing this for a trade? Uh, you know what? It was upgraded, I think, a few days back, and I, and I just lost it. It went off my radar. And at this point, look at the chart. It's already pretty much priced in a bit of it. This was the upgrade. It continued. You know, I'm not going to play, but I do think if you're long it, you know, from this upgrade, maybe, you know, right in front of 60, you sell some and then, you know, stay with it because over time it does look like it's back on its game. And for those of you who are curious, Re got that pop for actual fundamental data, actually. Uh. It updated a mineral resource estimate, which is why it, it, it rallied. It wasn't from takeover rumors. I love having a fundamental data. I'm just saying. <laughs> and an iPhone next to you at, at your desk. Okay. <laughs> then wrapping it up here, I do want to point out that Bespoke had this really great note, Scott, that said, of the 12 days where Alcoa rose after reporting earnings, the S&P 500 had a positive earnings season nine times. This wow. is that they count about 34 times that Alcoa reported. What so, do you think? So if that's very a, positive. So, so if that's a barometer, that's great. And I think you know people were waiting for some clarity from earnings because if you saw back in December, you know you had Oracle was a little disappointing, Intel a little disappointing, some retail numbers were disappointing, and we've been trying to absorb all the disappointment. So now that the disappointments are absorbed, if we can get some good news, right. we could be off to the races. And then again. 1320 to 1340. All right, there you go. 1320 to 1340. So that's it for us for today. Happy trading, everybody. I'm Alex Steele from The Street. And I'm Scott Redler. And if you want to follow us on the virtual trade floor, make sure, because we're talking all day long about what we're seeing, and it's been a very stock-specific tape.